Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for this evening. Father God, we thank you that you've showed us your love and that you've chosen us, that you're ever present with us, Lord God. We thank you, Father God, for those that have come here tonight to worship and glorify your mighty name. And thank you, Lord, that you've even place the desire in our hearts, Father God, to gather and to hear your voice, Lord. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon this evening tonight, and Father God, we ask that you would have your way in our midst, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, you may be seated. Uh, before Brother Dan comes, I, 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 just, I just wanted to share this. Um, As he was, um, we were on the phone, and as he was beginning to prophesy to to us about about what he was seeing, um, the Lord was reminding me of of what we had shared on Sunday when we began to progress into the Philippian church. And remember the story that Paul uh, cast the, uh, the spirit of divination out of that girl. That was the strong man of that city was holding, holding that city back. And the minute Dan shared with me, and I'm not going to go any further, he just told me what Dan's going to share with you about the house is what has already happened. That's what happened was the strong man was cast out. And so um, we... Um, I'm, I'm going to let the man of God come and share what God has put in his heart, and we will, we will see how the Holy Ghost does from there on out. Amen. Come on, Dan. Oh, you want to hand it to Hill? Okay. Praise the Lord. I'm no stranger to you folks. You all know me. And I've had several invitations uh, in the past from Pastor Dale to come and share. But I never felt led to come and share because I come here to fellowship. I like to worship. And I come to get a break from my church. You know, just to take a break, you know, new environment. But as we were talking, I, I never really thought about the purpose of this church and where God was taking this church. You know, I, I, I know certain things, but it never really dawned on me or clicked. But while we were sharing, I saw, I saw into the invisible realm. And I began to share with Pastor Dale what I was uh, seeing. It wasn't like thus says the Lord. It was just what I was seeing. And he asked me to come and, and to share. And when he said that, I felt the confirmation, the witness to come and to share. And I'm just going to flow. I, I said to the Lord, <clears throat> I'm just going to flow and, you know, I'll... Be everywhere, but, but, you know, that's fine. I'm just going to flow out of my overflow. It may not be, quote, unquote, theologically uh, sound, per se, but I'm going to share my conviction and what I believe the Lord has given me, okay? Whatever the Lord wants. <clears throat> just to give you a quick update. Uh, since we last connected, um, I am now officially a full-time pastor with my church, and the Lord has been blessing. We've added about 20 people over the last several months, and uh, we just received another member on Sunday, and they're trickling in, so we thank God for that, and I really believe that I'm following my passion. And I'm going to see where the Lord takes it. But let's look to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in Jesus' name. 
And Lord, we recognize that it's not by might nor by power, but by your Spirit. And Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit will have full and complete control. Lord, I ask that Christ will be lifted up and glorified. I ask, Lord, for clarity of thought and expression. I ask, Lord, that you will anoint uh, me as I deliver this word, Lord, that it will go forth with the unction and the authority that you would have it to go forth with. And, Lord, it will bring release and transformation. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll give you some verses, but as when I hung up the phone, I was concerned that I didn't forget what I um, shared with Pastor Dale, but the Lord actually expand, expand, expanded on it and um, even uh, led me to some verses. But today I was on my knees praying. Sometimes I walk, I kneel or whatever. And then I felt to get on my face before the Lord in my living room. And I was on my face crying out to the Lord. And this is what I was saying, Lord, give me a word for the folks at Christ's Life Fellowship. Give me a word. Give me a word for the folks at South Hadley. And when I said that, it just rose up in my spirit. It just rose up, and it was, tell them to worship me. <clears throat> tell them to worship me, and God is my witness. I'm not making this up. I was on my face, and it just rose up, Pastor Dale, out of my spirit. Tell them to worship me. I don't know what's happening and, and all of that stuff, and it's not my business, but I know that this church is being tested. Every church has a purpose. We have the collective purpose, but we also have an individual role to play. <clears throat> and God did not call this church to be like other churches. God did not call this church to be like the church down the road or to implement the same programs or to be similar. Every church has a distinct role. Our church in Springfield has a distinct role as well. God is calling us to intercessory prayer. But God has called this church and raised up <clears throat> this church for intercessory praise and worship. God has called this church to stand between the altar and the holy place and to take their position and to engage in intercessory praise and worship. And the enemy has been trying to distract you from your calling and from your purpose. You have to know your purpose. If we want the Holy Spirit to lead us, we have to know where he's taken us. I'm going to read this verse, 2 Kings, <clears throat> chapter 6. When the servant of the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside, there were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir. What will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. 
Don't be afraid, Elisha told him. For there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes. And when he looked up, he saw the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots and fire. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that you will open our eyes that we may see into the invisible. I pray that you will open the eyes of our spirit, the eyes of our understanding, Lord, that we may see beyond the natural into the invisible realm. In Jesus' name. We need to see into the invisible realm. Salamo kokete la hakai ilamo kusi tai eleri bo kusi te la mama makuya hai la bo kuya te ta londe bo kusi la bahaka ilama mute kaya so te kiri iri atu bikesi akoroji kuto. For surely don't be moved from the purpose, saith the Lord. For surely we have pressed for that what we thought, and we, that what we desired, and that which we have been after. But surely, says the Lord, that we should move toward what I have planned and purpose, saith God. All the things that we plan are good. But the things the Lord plans are perfect. Move in the way of perfection, saith God. Amen. In the book of Colossians, chapter 15, I'm just going to read some verses here. Christ is the invisible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made things which we can see and things we can't see. Visible and invisible. I'm speaking about the invisible. I'm going to focus on the invisible. Such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. There are thrones... Their kingdoms, their rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Paul says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principality, power, might, and dominion, and spiritual wickedness in the invisible realm. Now, before we go on, we're not fighting the enemy. Christ has won the battle, but we have to subdue and take authority. Do you understand? We have to take authority. We have to enforce the victory. There is an invisible realm 
that God wants us to see into. There is an elaborate network of kingdoms and rulers superimposing on each other. And God wants us to subdue the invisible realm. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in the invisible realm. It first has to be subdued in the invisible realm before it's manifested here on the earth into the visible realm. This church has, through your praise, your intercessory praise and worship, you broke through into a different level and dimension in the invisible realm. See, Christ, Jesus, conquered death, hell, and the grave. He went into the earth. But he has left the invisible realm for the church to subdue. He went down, but we have to subdue what's out here. And this church entered a new level of dimension through praise and worship, and the enemy came against this church. To destroy it, to disrupt, to tear it apart. After I hung up the phone, I was sitting there and the anointing fell on me. And Pastor Dale, I'm telling you what I saw. And I prayed. I said, God let the people see it. When you stand, I pray that you would see the impact this church has made in the invisible realm. And as a result of that, nations have been affected and impacted and changed. Do you understand that? Maybe I'm speaking gibberish. I don't know. God showed me that nations in Africa, India, and those remote areas have been Im impacted because this church has broken through into the invisible realm. I'm not making it up. I, I, you know me. I don't do this stuff. And the devil is mad. The enemy is mad. And God is saying, get back to your purpose. Stand between the altar and the holy place. Sometimes we think it's these great evangelists over in Africa that are changing these nations. Nope. See, it's not about your little community, but it's about the kingdom of God. And this church is a spiritual giant when it comes to the things of God. Get back to your purpose, the Lord says. Don't get discouraged. <clears throat> In Mark chapter 9, Jesus said to his disciples, 
they came down from the Mount of Transfiguration, and he healed, delivered a, a boy who, who had epilepsy, but his disciples couldn't cast out that demon. And then the Lord said to them, the Son of Man is going to be betrayed into the hands of his enemies. He will be killed, but three days later, he will rise from the dead. Jesus, and, and it says, they didn't understand what he was saying. However, they were afraid to ask him what he meant. He was saying to them, in three days, on the third day, you will enter a new dimension of power. And this church has broken through Pastor Dill. But they didn't understand what the Lord was saying. Why? Because they were arguing about which of them was the greatest in the kingdom of God. They were arguing, debating, comparing, jealousy, strife. Who's greater? Who has a greater anointing? Who has a greater purpose? Well, we're the inner circle because we were up there on the mountain and saw the transfiguration. And please, you know I love you. Let's close the door to that spirit of pride that is creeping in. There's a spirit of pride that is creeping in and we have to cast it out. What's going to destroy the flow of, of, of revelation is the spirit of pride. They were so, uh, so caught up with who was greater that they could not understand what Jesus was saying. I'll move on. <clears throat> I've got a couple more verses and that's it. See, when you step into your role, there's a shifting that begins to happen in the heavenlies. And alignments begin to take place. That's all I can, that's the best way I can describe it. There's a shift in alignments. And the kingdom of God is released with impact and force, destroying the kingdoms of the enemy. <clears throat> Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices shouting in heaven. The world has now become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. Who is the Christ? You. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Has the kingdom of this world become the kingdom of his Christ? It happens when we take our place and begin to subdue the invisible realms. Then the 24 elders sitting on the thrones before God. The 24 elders is the church. Past and present. It's a present reality. Sitting on the thrones before God fell with their faces to the ground and worshiped him. 
This is the church. This is what happens when you step into your role. The visible and the invisible connect. And there's a shift in. And the kingdom of God comes forth with power and with authority. And it says, this said, and we give thanks to you, Lord God, the Almighty. The one who is and who always was. For now you have assumed your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were filled with wrath, but now the time of your wrath has come. It's time to judge the dead and reward your servants, the prophets, as well as your holy people and all who fear your name from the least to the greatest. It is time to destroy all who have caused destruction on the earth. How does God do it? Through the praise and worship of his people. We give him permission. If we don't step into our role, he won't do it. He's not stuck, but that's, that's the mystery. God has chosen a people to work through. I've come a long ways, Pastor Dale. <laughs> I'm not talking about the rapture anymore. I will in a second, though. See, when we step into, when these kingdoms are subdued, then in a moment, in, a, in the twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed and we will step over and grab those who are over there. It's not going to happen until we do what God has called us to do. To step into your role. Then it said, then in heaven, the temple of God was opened. And the ark of his covenant could be seen inside the temple. The presence and the glory of God. What opened it? The worship of the saints. Can we see into the invisible? If we should see into the invisible, we would stop all of our nonsense. The problem with the church is that they're not hearing what God is saying because they're too caught up with being better and bigger than everyone else. And we have this exclusive spirit. His disciples had that. There was a man casting out demons and they stopped him because he wasn't with them. And I'm going to close with this. Did you get the gist of the prophecy? It's a prophecy, but I can't really teach it. I can just release it and try to expand a little bit so you can get some clarity. Before I close with this, I want to say to the worship leaders, you play a very pivotal role. And I'll tell you what the Lord said to me to tell you, you guys. I know we do the hill song and all of that stuff. It's time for you guys to write your own music. <clears throat> and this is how it's going to happen. I'm telling you. I mean, I've been asking the Lord, open my eyes to see the invisible realm. And I'm hearing from God. He will, give you the, he will not give you the words first. He will give you the music. The anointing is carried on the music. He will give you the tunes, the music, and then you will put the words to the music. 
It was spoken over you and you have resisted it. That you are supposed to play those drums prophetically and lead the worship. And before we enter into worship, you're going to do it again. You're going to play those drums. But don't go by your techniques and your skills. Let the spirit flow out of you and beat those drums. Don't try to be a jazz player or some fancy musician. I'm not saying you are, but it's a warning. Just allow the Spirit of God to flow through you and make the prophetic declarations on those drums. It sounds crazy. I can't back it up with theology, but I'm telling you what the Lord is saying. Huh? I told you some of the things might be crazy. Yeah. Man, the Lord is showing me the invisible realm. If we can see it, there's such, this, there's such an elaborate network of kingdoms imposing on each other. And when it says the kingdoms of this world, it's the, it's the, the uh, invisible and the visible. But too many times we focus just on the visible and what we see. But, but for it to happen... In the visible realm, it first has to happen in the invisible. Christ was crucified in the invisible before he was crucified here on this earth, right? He was crucified before, right? He, he existed before he became visible. That's the law, the spiritual law. He is the visible of the what? The church is the visible You can, <laughs> and the people that left us, they're with us, but they're not flying around with harps and doing all of that stuff. They are right there with us, worshiping God. God needed some worshipers on that side, so He said, "I'm going to handpick some." I want you over here, and I want you to join with them. And the invisible and the visible become the visible image of the Christ. <clears throat> the Lord said to close with this passage. I don't know what it means or who it applies to. But I'm going to close with this. <clears throat> Second Kings 20. About that time, Hezekiah came, became deadly ill. <clears throat> About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill. Excuse me. And the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave them this message. This is what the Lord says. Set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O oh Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and wept bitterly. But before Isaiah had left the middle courtyard, this message came to him from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah, the leader of my people. Tell him this is what the Lord the God of your ancestor, David, says, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. 
I will heal you, and three days from now, you will get out of bed and go to the temple of the Lord. In three days, the third day, you're going to go to the temple of the Lord. I will add 15 years to your life. I will rescue you and this church, this city, from the king of Assyria. That's a principality. I will defend this city for my own honor and for the sake of my servant David, the Messiah, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to skip a couple of verses. Meanwhile, Hezekiah had said to Isaiah, What sign will the Lord give to prove he will heal me and that I will go to the temple of the Lord three days from now? Isaiah replied, this is a sign from the Lord to prove that he will do as he promised. Would you like the shadow of the sundial to go forward 10 steps or backward 10 steps? The shadow always moves forward, Hezekiah replied. So that would be easy. Make it go 10 steps backward instead. So Isaiah the prophet asked the Lord to do this. And he caused the sundial to move 10 steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. 10 steps. This is what the Lord told me today, Pastor Dale. I know 10 represents human government. 5 is the work of grace. 10 is double honor. Double grace. God is extending double honor and double grace to you and to this church. Double honor and double grace. The glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. And his house will be a house for all people and all nations. I hope that you, you are hearing through your spiritual ears what the Spirit of God is saying. Amen. And then it says, Hezekiah wrote a poem after the Lord healed him. In the process. And in Isaiah 38, it says, he said in his poem, in his praise, his declaration of praise, only the living can praise him. The church is a living, breathing entity. Those that went before us, they're the living as well. They're with us, praising God. But this is what Hezekiah said. Think of it. The Lord is ready to heal me. 